It's been two and a half years in the making. It's called the Helderberg Artisan Collection. And the very first build is in remembrance of my father and I named it Vader, the German name for father. Let me tell you a little bit about the Helderberg Artisan Collection and how it compares to the Helderberg Defender. The Artisan Collection is a design to be minimalist and classic. It doesn't have that modern feel other than the bonnet and the interior definitely doesn't have that modern feel. It's old age. It's a lot of leather. It's a lot of wool. Not all of them will have wool but it's just a tremendous amount of leather that's old craftsmanship. So. The Helderberg Artisan Collection, think about it as a classic Defender design, and think about the Helderberg Defender as a Defender that is basically trumps the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon because it has that modern flair, that modern feel. So two different models for two different personalities, or in my case, two different models depending which day of the week it is and how you feel. So on Vader, a quick overview. Porsche sepia brown, non-metallic paint. It's a Puma bonnet, which Puma bonnet means that it has the hump versus the heritage. Does not have the hump, it's low sunk. Uh, minimal badging is what I decided to do on that. Didn't do Defender on the bonnet, even though a lot of people love it. Again, classic minimalist was my whole vision of the design. The grill, heritage grill, the bumper, steel bumper, steel wolf wheels, which is a 16 inch wheel, and a little meatier Goodyear tire to get better traction and also just for the rugged look. Again, I mentioned it's, it's a five door D110. And a D110, if you're confused with that, D110 means 110 inches from center of axle to center of axle. And for you guys who want to get specific, we're not going to worry about all that, but basically understand that. D90 means 90 inches from center of axle to center of axle. A D90 is generally a two door and a D110 can be a five door. We're counting the rear door too. D90 would be a three door, but you can also do a D110 three door, which you can see on the website. Our recent three door D110 is called Dario, which is a Tuscan blue. So dark brown canvas top on it with tinted windows in the top by the way and the removal of the top is extremely easy and i'll show you that in some detail interior bison leather with a harris tweed wool and then the carpet and i really got to mention the carpet which really excites me it's a porsche carpet so it's a porsche wool and when i say wool it is really truly a hundred percent wool and it's considered a square weave pattern and it has leather binding around it that is the bison leather from the seats so we'll go through all of the elements of this build but just know the engine is a performance built engine it does have a larger vnt turbo on it and the suspension is it's an old man emu which is known to be really good shocks and really good springs with polyurethane bushings and again everything is new on this build everything down to the marker lights so but we'll go step by step 
So with that, let's start at the front of it. The first thing you're gonna notice is the grill, of course. The grill is a heritage grill and it has the Land Rover badge. Again, I mentioned minimal badging, no Defender badge here, chose not to do that. I felt it was enough to do the Land Rover badge right here. And when I show you the one on the back, it's unique and rare, but anyway. So heritage grill. And then you'll also notice this bump out in the center of the grill. If you look at a lot of my builds, a lot of times you'll see it doesn't look like other builders' builds. And that's because I do what's called an air con nose. This air con nose bumps the center grill out. And my belief is it gives it more dimension. So dimension, pops of color, or whether you're going to monotone, these are all aspects that you've got to consider when you're designing the Defender. So Aircon brings this grill out a little farther. It does serve some purpose sometimes. And the reason it's called Aircon, A-I-R-C-O-N, is because of air conditioning. So it brings it out further for the air conditioning condenser to have more room. And then if you do a larger intercooler for the turbo, then again, that gives you additional room. In this case, it's really cosmetic. It was not needed, but I just like it where it stands out a little farther. Headlights, they are not LED. I did the incandescent bulb. And the reason that I did that is because if you are a Land Rover, Porsche buff, I mean, you will look at headlights and you'll say, these are YPAC headlights. So W-I-P-A-C, it's a YPAC headlight. It is brand new and it's pretty bright. I mean, so the bulbs are actually an LED bulb inside, but the actual housing is the old style with the, you know, like what you would expect on an older vehicle. Uh, these are LED though. So the turn signals and the marker lights are LED. And then the, the surrounds here are metal. They're not plastic because I just, I have a thing against plastic guys. So it is metal, painted the body color, the Porsche sepia brown, and then just the accents with the silver heritage grill and then the silver galvanized steel bumper. This is steel. So a lot of times people ask me, well, how's it gonna do in a crash? Well, all I can say is, boy, I feel sorry for that car you hit because it will demolish it. Um, as you probably know, or you don't know that defenders are aluminum. I mean, it's aluminum bonnet and the fenders are called wings. These are all aluminum. And when you notice any of the Helderberg builds or the Artisan Collection builds, there's no waviness to our fenders whatsoever because a lot of times we're replacing these fenders, these wings. It's, we use panel beaters. A panel beater is an individual, is a, is a gentleman that is skilled in the work of aluminum and they are beating it by hand with a mallet and making sure everything is perfect. So no Bondo, no glaze, nothing like that. It's just perfection is what it is. So that's the front of it. And again, very simple, very minimalist. So we'll, we're gonna call this really a sheep and wolf's clothing. So now that I'm at the side of the vehicle, I'm gonna point out a few things that you may or may not notice, but the windshield brackets right here, Normally I do the billet aluminum and they're a contrasting color like a black or a silver, but I chose to, again, keep it very simple, very minimalist. So we painted the aluminum, we painted it the body color. And then a lot of times people don't even really recognize or notice these. And these are the flaps and the flaps quite easily. You have a lever that's right in here and you hit the lever and these flaps open up. So think about this is if you're on the beach and you have the top off and you have the windows down and you want more airflow, raise this up. A tremendous amount of air comes in. And not only that, they look really cool. And if you inspect our flaps too, you'll see again, all new foam, all new hinges, all new, everything's new. So even the, the, the actual, I guess you can say the hinge bolts are all new. Painted the mirror backs, body color. Again, just showing the attention to detail on that. And then the hinges, a lot of times what I do with the hinges, it's either a billet aluminum black or a billet aluminum silver. But again, minimalist design is what we were going for. So we painted their new hinges, but we painted those body color. And then of course they have the correct spacers, the rubber spacers behind them. So then it keeps that spacing away from the aluminum. And if you look at the details, you will notice that there is no overspray. There is no paint on the bolts, on the actual rubber brackets, because 
everything is disassembled and painted piece by piece. That's something that you rarely see in any of the builds that are out there. The body comes off of the frame, all the parts get disassembled, like the fenders get disassembled, these are not on, nothing's on. Everything is disassembled and everything is painted individually and then the vehicle is reassembled. So it's a frame off paint job on a rotisserie. So now let's move a little further back and talk about the top. And uh, I'm gonna show you some neat features that we put into the top. The top is custom canvas. It's a dark chocolate brown on the outside and it's a lighter tan on the inside. So the one thing you're gonna notice about the top, well, there's gonna be more than one thing, is the dark chocolate brown, but then the actual stitching on the top is the Porsche CP brown. So we did a contrast stitching on the top, and then we also did the tinted windows. Probably one of the biggest questions I get about soft tops is how easy is it to take off and put back on? And I will tell you, it will probably take you seven minutes to take this top off, so it's really easy because of the, the way the actual attachment points work, they're just little buttons that pull out. They're not, and I don't even, they're not snaps, they're buttons. So you just pull it and it comes out like this. And then of course, if you just want to roll the top up, you have your zippers, which actually has Velcro. So then you roll it up and then you put this, straps that hold it in place and then you have a partial soft top but if you want to take the entire top off then it's real easy and then there's tension points on the inside you would actually loosen those first and then the top you just roll it from the front all the way to the back roll it up put it in the back or leave it in your garage so again about seven minutes to take the top off and probably about 10 to 12 minutes to put the top back on Taking it off is a one person job, putting it back on is a one person job, but it'd definitely be easier with two people. So top is really easy to remove. And again, you can see where I mentioned the color, the color difference, the dark brown versus the tan, which is actually a herringbone tan. So attention to detail. So still talking about back here in the top, the soft top, it has a hoop system we didn't put a roll cage, it just has these aluminum bars that, uh, well, not aluminum, galvanized steel bars. And the reason of the galvanized steel bars here is to match the galvanized trim pieces that we did here. Again, contrast of color. So really, when you're driving this Defender, Vader, and you're driving it like this, this is one entire look. And then when you roll the windows up, that's a second look. And when you take the top off, that's a completely different look because of all the galvanized bars and all the galvanized cappings. This is not a spray paint. This was actually galvanized. And then of course you will see the rivets that are not painted, which you'll see in a lot of builds that those rivets are painted and they should never be painted because that just tells you they just did a cheap spray job is what they did. You'll also see spot welds, which you do want to see these spot welds. That's telling you that there's no Bondo in the side. So the body of Vader, the doors, everything is complete perfection. The doors are brand new. They're Puma style doors, but everything is perfect. There's not a wave, there's not a ripple, and the paint is perfect. Perfection just lays as flat as it can be. It does not have a metallic in it, so it's not gonna be as vibrant as let's say Enzo or one of the other builds, the Helderberg build, because of, it doesn't have the metallic. But it definitely looks different whether it's in the sunlight or whether it's in the shade. All right, guys, I've gotta be honest with you. I haven't decided to sell this yet. It's on the website. I'd like to build one for you. I'm just not 100% I wanna sell it yet. But that's a whole nother side note. Let's talk about how do you get into this Defender? If you'll notice, it's not like my Helderberg series, meaning that there's no step up bars, nerf bars, rock sliders, there's nothing like that. In fact, it's, it's very classic, it's very elegant. It's the step down. So, I mean, we actually have steps. They're painted Porsche CPU brown. They have the rubber platform and then they have the spring. So there it is, it's perfect. You can step up and step in, very stable. And then when you don't want that step, you just fold it up out of the way. And they're all five doors, meaning 
all four of these doors, and then one at the rear. And it makes it really easy to get in. In fact, the step in the rear makes it really easy to get in. And, uh, but we'll get to the rear and I'm excited to show you the rear. I can't decide though. Am I more excited about the exterior or the interior? Because I have to be honest, when it first showed up, I sat in here for probably two hours and even took phone calls because I'm so excited about the interior. So let's move around to the back. Do you know how a vehicle has a unique smell? For example, like Porsche has its own unique smell. Rolls Royce has its own unique smell, as does Bentley. And I can kind of go down the list. I mean, not all vehicles have a unique smell, but those do. This one, I can definitely smell the bison leather, the Harris tweed wool, and the wool carpet, which is a Porsche German square weave. So, I mean, I really wish you could smell the smells, but it's a very enjoyable smell that honestly, I, I go to the sporting clay range and I just kind of sit here and watch the guys for a while. I think partially because I'm very proud of Vader because again, it was in remembrance of my father, but it's just very unique. And uh, I'm really excited about this build, but let me get into some details on it. And starting with galvanized caps. I mentioned that on the side, but you'll see the galvanized caps go all the way around and then even the galvanized bracket down the edge. And you'll see a lot of Heldebergs have this galvanized bracket down the edge. And I do that as a design cue, meaning that it's just not a vehicle that's rolled into a paint booth and some windows taped up and they spray over it cheaply. That if it's a Heldeberg, everything is disassembled and painted piece by piece and this was no exception and the rear here we have the galvanized rear cap here the galvanized rear cap here and something we did different was leather on the rear door generally i don't do that on a helderberg and the reason being is because all it takes is for you to be using it as a daily driver and picking up something from the you know, the gardening place or putting something in the back and you could end up messing up the leather, but I felt it was very fitting. Not only leather on the rear door, but leather on the handle for the rear door and even hand leather on the inside, which I'll get into. But the rear is, it's really nice. And yes, it's center facing bench seats, which is minimalist and is really just kind of a, a staple when it comes to a Land Rover Defender but we did it in the bison leather with the Harris tweed wool. And for a little history lesson, Harris tweed is actually from Scotland. They are, when it's Harris tweed, they have the rights, the patent to do this very specific virgin uh, wool is what it is. And just the mix of all the aromas in here. And it's, it's not unpleasant, let me tell you, but the Harris tweed wool, the German square weave wool carpet, with all of the leather, the bison leather, it's, it's really very pleasurable. Uh, in the back here too, on either side are speakers, and we definitely didn't cheap out on the speakers. These are Focal speakers, which are handmade in France. Uh, there is seat belts back here, so there is seating for four adults, and it, it, being a soft top, they can sit up tall, they, they don't have to squinch over, it would be very it would be a very comfortable drive i'm not saying that you're going to drive for five or six hours but it would be very comfortable and i've said this in many videos but you know christy and i will have uh friends that will come over and they'll always say paul you drive we want to ride in the back they don't want to go in the second row they want to ride in the back and it's uh it's just i can't even explain it either you get it or you don't but uh, it's uh it's quite enjoyable so some things pointing out on the rear too, to continue on, LED taillights up here, and then of course your LED turn signals down there. And then this light here, I always get questioned about this. Somebody will take delivery of one of the Heldebergs and they're like, only one backup light's working. I'm like, well, you only have one backup light because that's European. This is a fog light. So if it's foggy outside, you flip the switch on the dash and this lights up and it's a fog light for people to be able to see you. Your backup light is here on the other side. You only have one backup light that's European and why should we ruin it with the American ways? One thing I debated over was the wheels. When designing this, 
I went with the Black Wolf Steel. So it's a 16 inch wheel, but I kept on debating whether or not do I want to paint this a body color, the Porsche Sepia Brown, or should I go with like a boost wheel, which would be silver. So just changing the wheels. If it was painted the Porsche Sepia Brown, it would completely change the entire look of the vehicle. And then if it was silver, it would really change the look of the vehicle. And I've had a couple friends give me their input. Oh, put silver wheels on there. Oh, here it is. I like the black ones. That's what I decided to do. And the reason being is in remembrance to my father, my father's Bronco had black steel wheels and it just has a rugged look to it. It just has that rugged feel that I really enjoy. So talking about the back a little, far, a little more, you'll notice that the rear cross member back here is painted a body color. If you were to see the underside of this, you would be amazed of all of the paintwork that happened underneath. But again, painted the body color and then the tire carrier itself painted the body color too. So again, keep it very classic. I didn't want a lot of uh, colors. You know, I didn't want a lot of blacks and silvers and all that. I wanted to keep it almost, I'm gonna say a monotone, a very simplistic design. Uh, I did do a little bit of splash right here and that's, you'll notice the Land Rover badge itself is brass. So it's a brass Land Rover badge, but what we did is we took the Porsche Sepia Brown paint and we rubbed it into the actual badge itself. So when you look at it from an angle, you can see the Porsche Sepia Brown paint around the letters, but it's been kind of, let's say, burnished, rubbed off, but it's just a little attention to detail that I thought was pretty cool. So I do like the brass Land Rover badge versus the regular cast aluminum badge that's just black and silver. Lights being square lights, we could have gone with the round LED lights, but again, I wanted that classic, that artisan collection feel. So I went with the original style, but they do have LED bulbs in them for the backup light. So that's the rear end of it and uh, of Vader. Now the exciting part, like the outside wasn't exciting enough, but we're gonna move to the interior and uh, I'll get to sit in it some more and smell all the leather in the wool. So why don't you just take a second and just really look at the interior and pay attention to the stitching and the leather and just the fine detail of everything that's happened in this interior. And while you're watching it, while you're taking this time to look at the interior, keep one thing in mind, everything was 100% hand done. Let's start with the steering wheel. A lot of times in the Helderberg series, you will see a wood steering wheel. But in this one, I wanted to keep the classic steering wheel. This is a classic, true, original Land Rover steering wheel. But it was all wrapped in leather and hand-stitched. And then, of course, the Helderberg logo badge right on the center. And everything, even the steering column itself, is all leather. The stainless steel wrapped gauges, which are LED backlit. And I just, I really don't know where to go on this other than I think just watching the video and looking at all the details of this interior. It does have air conditioning. Air conditioning works extremely well. We did something a little different to the air conditioning and it really will, it's cold. Trust me, it's cold. Uh, the shift knob is in wood. I also have one in leather. It does have heated seats. And again, I've, I've said it over and over, Harris Tweed Wool, that's what it is with the bison leather complement. But as you're looking at the leather, definitely look at the carpet. And I wish you could smell, because just me standing here, I can smell the leather and the wool and everything, and it's very enjoyable. And you'll also notice even here, the, the plastic cover of the vents that's inside this glove tray it's even painted. A lot of times on the build, you'll see that it's that ugly, dingy gray, but we painted it uh, a little lighter than the Porsche Sepia Brown. So everything in here is 100% fresh, new, even the seat frame. So everything is perfection. So just take it all in because me talking is not gonna really do enough, but even look at the stitching on the door panels and the door handles, which are also wrapped in leather. So that's the front of the interior. Let's move to the second row, and I'll show you where the passengers are gonna sit and some unique features of the seats. Before I get into the second row seats, let me point out some things in the rear that you may or may not notice. The first thing is the Alpine subwoofer that sits on the back of the center console, 
and then the seats themselves, the backs actually have the book pockets, map pockets, whatever you want to call it. But our interior is 100% leather. So you'll notice on a lot of luxury cars, I mean, whether it's a Mercedes, a Range Rover, even a Bentley, it's not 100% leather, it, but ours are. So when you reach into the, the actual map pocket here, you can feel the leather and you can fold it back and you can see there's no vinyl. Everything's leather. Even the pillars, the B pillars here are all wrapped in leather. So it's just attention to detail. It really is. This is a remarkable build and it's absolutely beautiful. And it, again, it makes me smile. But let's talk about the second row seats. It's not about me. The first thing you'll notice about the second row seats is the amount of leg room. The second row seats, this bench seat, again, very classic. It's the original style seat that you would expect in a Defender. And with this original style seat, it does provide more leg room. You can be a full size adult and you can sit back here and you can be comfortable. The seat also sits higher than it does in the front. So the second row is up higher quite a bit. It's actually six inches higher than it is in the front. So when your passengers are sitting back here, they're not looking into the headrest. They can actually see out through the windshield and see where you're going. So it really is a visual experience for everyone involved in the vehicle. And then when you move back to the back cargo area, those center facing bench seats are even higher than what these seats are. So your passengers in the very rear can also look forward and see where you're going and not being blocked by everything. So one of the features with the bench seat, it does have, it does have seat belts on it. They are not heated and they do fold. So you have a lever over here and then the seat folds down. And if you move the seat belts out of the way, which they just tuck in there, then they fold down, not completely flat, but it does give you more room if you're gonna carry ski, snowboard, whatever it might be. And then even when you look back here to the C pillar back here, all wrapped in leather. So everything is wrapped in leather. There's really not any bare metal other than the tops of the frames, but you can't wrap those in leather. So, and again, all 100% leather. So this is our bison leather with our Harris Tweed. And yeah, it's comfortable. And uh, I'm gonna say it one more time. The smell is fantastic. In this shot, I'm gonna put a little light bulb on the screen, go ding, because I'm gonna show you guys something that you may or may not know. Um, where's the battery on a Land Rover Defender? The battery is under the driver's seat. So I'm gonna show you that. And one of the reasons I wanna show you the battery under the driver's seat, I just want you to see the level of perfection of this build. So you just pop that seat up. It's really easy to pull up. It does have the cables for the heated seat right there. So you pull the seat up, it just pops out of the way. Disconnect the heat, that's the heated seat. And then here's your battery box right here. And again, German short weave, or square weave, sorry, uh, with bison leather wrapped. You see the seat frame is all new, but this plate pops up, it slides into a track. And then that's where your battery's at. And then you'll also notice too, the controller for the Alpine system is in here. But I just want you to take a moment and look at the battery box and the perfection. You don't see this on other builds, but you see it on the Haldeberg.